Mm. And that's the whole point of art is to make something your own and to and I I just I want to capture the feeling of the ballad. I don't want to capture the exact pose. I want to capture the feeling and the emotion, not just where they're standing and how they're standing. It's so great to meet you here on Zoom, and, and I've been um, looking at your artwork, and I've I've seen it on Instagram. Um, love it. I love what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. So tell me, where are you based? I'm based in London at the minute, in Stratford. So um, yeah. I figured London was the best place to, to start an art career properly, really. So, yeah, here I am. But but your accent sounds um, more to the north of England. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. raised in, in North Wales, but then I was in Chester for a while, which is near Liverpool. So um, oh, okay, yeah, that's yeah. what I hear the Liverpool accent. <laughs> yeah. So and um, as a child, were you always interested in drawing or, or painting? Yeah, on and off. Um, but then mm. I gave it up at like 13 and only picked it up about five years ago, five and a half years ago. Um, so, yeah, not, not, oh, I liked it and, and I enjoyed it, but I never pursued it. Um, so, yeah. And uh, did you uh, do further training then after school? No, 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 fully self taught. I, um, I wow. just put a lot of hours into it. A lot of hours, a lot of work, a lot of time, and a lot of patience. And so, yeah, yeah, just just I, me. I always love these stories. These um, self people who are self taught. Or yesterday, I spoke to an artist who, um, also you know, was at the end of his his training, quit um, his studies and pursued his own style. Yeah, and. Yeah. And I think, although I think it's so important that the training is there and that some people go through the training, I also think there's a great um, value in in self education. In in that there's also that um, importance of self education. Yeah, I mean, Lowry, the artist Lowry said, you can't teach somebody to paint. You can show them what what they need to do, but you can't teach them how to paint. Um, and I think it's important, yes, to learn from the masters and to to use them as a, a teaching tool. But you do have to, at some point, you have to do your own thing because everybody's everything has been done. Every form of art has been pretty much done. Um, so you have to just do your own thing and make that really good. And that's it, really. But do you think that the fact that you are self-taught or that you, you go through this um journey is such a cliche word but but it must be a, a from where you started to where you are now do you think there's a lot more that you um are daring um because it's your thing and it's your style so you sort of break the rules a little bit yeah you have yeah i am it is very unconventional what i'm doing it's not like i had this um <laughs> I had this lady look at my work. I showed I showed her my work, and she'd been with the Royal Ballet for thirty years, um, and she was not she was not impressed by my ballet dances, <laughs> not at all. I was, <laughs> I was just like, okay, fair enough, you know. Really didn't really led into my work, and it was like, oh, the, the legs are too long, the fingers are too long, the two sort of you know the poses are not there. So I'm like, yeah, but. Um, it's like you sort of it it's it if I was doing it traditionally and I stuck to the rules of you know the proportions and all that, I wouldn't have my style. I wouldn't have my my long stretching fingers, I wouldn't have my long legs, and I wouldn't have any kind of real feel to it, I think, anyway. Um well, so yeah, yeah. yeah. I think if you speak to any ballet dancer, they would say that these uh, 
these long lines are are what they are being preached all the time. You know, they they say reaching and and stretching and 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 I love it. And and I'm fascinated by the fact that you are uh, so into this ballet theme with your work. So where did you get this idea, or what, where does the love for ballet come from? Um, it was never there initially. I it's it's getting stronger. So. <laughs> When I started doing it, I was doing it because I liked the movement of the ballet dancer. And then the more I see the ballet, the more I interact with ballet dancers, the more the more I love it and the more I explore it, the more I appreciate it. And the more I can sort of figure out, if I'm doing a pose, I can sort of figure out where the hand's going to be or where the foot's going to be or where... Where you know it's it's just it's getting stronger all the mm. time. It didn't really start off as a love for the ballet. It started off as I want to explore this and I want to I want to see how far I can take it. And it's just getting further and further and further. But the first dancer that the first ballet um, drawing that you made or artwork that you made. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Oh, but yeah. was this just the idea? Okay, I'm going to try this. Um, well, I, I, I sort of, I'll send you some images uh, later on. I, I kind of like, I was doing different dances, like like flamenco, salsa. They were really like oh. really bad, really bad. But then I tried ballet dancer, and I was like, okay, this works. This works quite well. I was like, yeah, this is this is good. I like the feel of it. And I just started making it from there. The first ones were horrendous, but they got they got good quite quickly. So um I'm I mean I've easily got oh two to three hundred watercolor ballet uh, paintings in my room easily. Um because it was that that prolific, that's why. I progressed because I just kept producing and producing and producing. So now, and do you go and watch the ballet often? I love going to the oh, ballet. Yeah. I love it. It's an excuse for me to wear my tuxedo. Um, oh, so okay. I go to the ballet. Uh, but yeah, I love it. The last one I saw was Akram Khan's Creature. Incredible. Um, the first one I saw was Swan Lake, and I love that. So yeah, I'm going next week actually to to the ballet as often as oh, I can okay. to, to go and see it. Yeah, I love it. But this is wonderful, and now there's this um, the movements now. So every time, or the more you get to know the don uh, the the ballet, and and obviously um, watching dancers and so so, you are moving towards then this um, also recreating that technique of the dancers. Is that what you're aiming for? No. Um well, kind of, because I mean, okay, there's 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 a there's a there's a certain amount of, of different positions that the ballet dancer performs. And for me, I I couldn't produce as many pieces as I have, two, three hundred paintings. Um if I stuck to what they were performing on what poses they were um uh striking shall we say so um i do i do go there to get a better understanding of how they work how they move how they stretch how they bend but i also when i see them do something i then put my own twist onto it you know um so if they're bending a certain way on stage i can then exaggerate that on paper so I go there to get the inspiration, but also when I get the inspiration, I'm like, right, how can I make this mine? How can I make it really sort of nearly extreme and really powerful? And I do. And I put life into it. But I find this um, great because, you know, I um, have watched also ballet many times and, I'm not I, I'm not clued up about the technique and everything, but I also you see you have an impression of you have a 
a sort of in your mind you have an idea of what the movements are like so it's wonderful that you do that that you don't um get so overly focused on the technique of the dancers but that you keep the artwork free from that yeah i do that was one of the criticisms that the lady from the royal ballet had um <laughs> i didn't <laughs> i didn't have i didn't i didn't know enough about it or i didn't know the correct way to portray it and um but i if i did like i said it would be restricted it would be it would yeah. be it would be boring there wouldn't be any movement there wouldn't be any life so i i i i sort of created my own art form from their art form um so yeah it's it's just yeah i had to take it and make it my own if that makes any yeah. sense i, think, I had to betray I... go on now i think this is great i think this is needed yeah we have to as artists we have to i mean look at really good artists i mean you inter you interviewed um david k israel and he's a phenomenal uh, composer and he's he's taken something beautiful and made it his own and done it really really well mm -hmm. and that's the whole point of art is to make something your own and to and i i just i want to capture the feeling of the ballad i don't want to capture the exact pose i want to capture the feeling and the emotion not just where they're standing and how they're standing that's well, there's a lot of, uh, when I look at your uh, paintings, there's a lot of, um, it, it gives a lot a feeling of movement. You know, when you watch it, you can almost, the, the pictures have a movement in themselves. Well, yeah, I mean, I find a lot of, of dance art is very stale. So, yeah, I mean, even if I didn't have the movement lines, it would still move, if that makes sense. And um, so for me, yeah, I, 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 know when, I know when a painting hasn't worked out because it's got no movement or life. If it has life and movement, then great. But it is, it's not easy to do, but I do it, if that makes sense. Um, mm. So, yeah, yeah, that has to, I mean, but yeah, yet again. Uh, this lady compared my work to Degas, great painter, great painter, yeah. But his his work was wasn't really full of any energy or life. Uh, um, so and mine is and mine, mine is focused purely on the ballerina and her movement and her journey. Well, it's sometimes um great to get this criticism just to prove what you are doing is uh you know that you believe in what you are doing so uh, and what what you've just now um also said it's it's really true but now um you, do you do exhibitions uh where can people buy your art so currently i'm i'm taking a bit of a break from mm -hmm. uh social media just to focus on me and just just to breathe a bit because I've produced a lot of work recently but I exhibited in from December till um, March no yeah March I did four exhibitions in a row in the Boomer Gallery in London Bridge and tonight I'm in a group show at the London Lighthouse Gallery in uh, Canning Town. So I exhibit quite often, and they're mainly group shows because to get a solo show is very hard and, and usually quite expensive. Um, I will be setting up a website uh, at some point, and um, I'll send you the link, and then yes. uh, I'll put it on my Instagram and, and all that. But I've got... I mean, it's not you can see behind me. This is one of my paintings. So... Um, I've got easily close to four hundred pieces in my in my room. Really? So, yeah, a lot of work, and they're all different things as well that I want to put out there, like landscapes and animals and waterscapes and you know things like that. So I just want to um, 
yeah, I just want to get them organized and then put them out there. And then when they're out there, then fine. But until then, mm-hmm. it's it's there's a few things I want to do still. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I exhibit. I exhibit regularly and um and people buy my work privately or at the exhibitions or if they come across it, you know, like tonight maybe. So yeah, there are there are ways of, of, of people to buy my work, but at some point there will be something, you know. But, uh, yeah, so but you you just don't you don't just focus on the dancers. You do like you're saying landscape, uh, but do you keep to the same type of style when you when you do your art? If you just bear with me a second, uh, yeah. so this is oh my days. This is one of my um, landscapes. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, that's it's, beautiful. Thank you. It's watercolor. Uh, I've done a few recently. Um, uh, they're all behind here. Um, this okay. one was a. Oh, I God. love the one behind you. It's Thank wonderful. You. Yeah, the uh, colors are just amazing. Oh wow! This one was a a Whistler painting I saw in the Tate Britain, and I thought I want that, but I couldn't take it because it's in a museum. Um, so I recreated <laughs> the best I could. Uh, so yeah, there's there's that. There's there's a painting I've got about a mouse sneaking out at night time and having a feast. There's all sorts of stuff. Um, so it's all going to go up eventually when I'm when I've organised it, or you know. And so, but you, the ballet. Go on. Sorry. No, but but what inspires these paintings then? Like you say, the one with the mouse. So what what was the the inspiration behind that one? Um, I don't know. I was trying to just do different things. So I did this at the same time, did the, the, the landscape, the watercolor I showed you, did that, and I did the mouse. And I wanted to do different things, but I just, I had like a thought in my head, and I thought, you know what? I want to paint a mouse having a midnight feast. And yeah. and I did, you know, there's a candle, there's a strawberry, there's a bottle of wine. And um, yeah, so I thought I want to just I just want to paint that, and I did. So <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I just whatever I, if I see something, oh, I like that. I'll I'll try and paint it. But mm-hmm. I don't usually rely on inspiration. I just do the work, and mm-hmm. the inspiration comes. You know. Mm-hmm. And in London, it it must be quite difficult because I mean, it's there's a lot of opportunity, but there's also a lot of competition. So it's like, um, from what I understand, it's like LA. Everyone's there to be an actor. Everyone's yeah. it's like a, it's like a crab bucket. So you know you, the crab gets to, to the top of the bucket, and then his mate pulls him down. Mm-hmm. So it's like that here. It's just everyone wants to be an artist, and there's some very very good artists, very good painters. But I mean, I met a young chap at the at which. So this this exhibition tonight is. It was a panel of judges. It's a juried exhibition. And it's 540 artists applied and 54 were accepted, me being one of them. Um, Congratulations. Wow. Um, Mm. So uh, I was talking to this chap and he did the the nicest, uh, technically really good um, landscape. I'm like, that's really good. I said, how old are you, mate? I thought like 25, 26. It was, I think it was 18. I was like, there's no way you're 18 and you've done that. What? You know, yeah. they're re- incredible, like like Bob Ross, like really good. Mm-hmm. And I said, how long have you been painting for? Only about maybe a year or two. I'm like, no. Nah. Um, and I'm like, they're really good painters. The, 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 the level of, you've got like the, the level of you know, average people that just sort of throw a, a paint tube at a canvas and call it out. Or you've got, and then you've got like this level, which is like they're good and they know how to paint. And the work is, even if you don't like it, it's good. So even if you don't, like people say art is subjective, it's not. It's down to personal preference. But even if you don't like a piece, like if you hated this piece behind me, or if you hated a, I don't know, a Picasso, it doesn't matter if you if you don't like it, but you still know that it's it, the quality of the work is is a high standard. 
So yeah, this this work is really high standard, or very a good standard. So yeah, the the amount of people in London that are trained to be artists that are very good at, at what they do is is insane. There's so many people trying to make it as a as an artist or a sculptor or a or whatever. Really, really hard. Really, a lot of competition. But it also takes time, isn't it? And I mean, like you were saying, you were you had you have so many paintings, you have so many times where you know it it, it didn't come out the way that you would uh, or hope to. Um, yeah. But you still persevered, and you still had to do the work. So um, I wonder sometimes if if we see the paintings, but we don't realize what the uh, previous amount of work. You know, so the the one painting that you see, but you don't see all the hundreds uh, that didn't make it to the wall. Yeah, I've got, I've, I've probably produced about four hundred pieces in the last three months, four months. Wow. Um, and only half of them made it. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, people. That's that's the thing when when it comes to pricing your work, mm -hmm. you. It's not. It's not um, accepted as a skill that you pay for. Um, but when you price your work, you look at it as I've painted a thousand versions of this, and it's only like you said this one that made it. So, um, when when people see the finished product, they go, "Oh, oh, that's oh, that's nice. Oh, oh, that's a bit expensive." Or Oh, yeah. that's really good. But like you said, they don't see the the hundreds of hours of pain and sleepless nights and early mornings and and getting it really wrong um and throwing them out and all that. They don't see all of that behind this this pretty perfect painting or whatever. And it's it's yeah, there's which you know, it's fair enough because the the average Joe doesn't need to know that. But if they go to, you know, look at art or go to art fairs or think about buying art, I I'd rec I think the public needs to sort of be a bit more aware of what goes into um, any kind of artwork, any kind of artwork. Um, well, yeah, I think it's a it's a very um... <laughs> It's a strange thing that I hear often uh, artists say and also musicians say that the public, uh, they they don't have to know about uh, the hours of work or the, the struggle behind it or the, you know, all the mistakes and so on. But I wonder if this is just the reason why art is not valued, you know, is that that people don't understand or that some some sort of um, artistic careers are not valued because people don't understand the the work and effort that goes in uh, behind the scenes. And that if we do know that, that we would then not necessarily uh, make a hoo-ha of it, but just appreciate it then. Yeah, so basically you're right. It's not appreciated, especially at my level, really. I mean, they appreciate it, but they don't buy it. They appreciate it, but they don't really want. To. I mean, they do and they don't. But it's 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 not even appreciated higher up. So with the big galleries, like the big big galleries, like White Wall and Clarendon Fine Art, and <clears throat> they are like the main contender. And <clears throat> with their work that they have, they've got big painters like Fabian Perez, Todd White, Christian Hook. And these guys sell paintings for a hundred thousand pounds, fifty thousand pounds, and people buy them because because they've got the money and the assets, and and also because they view the paintings as an investment. But people don't appreciate, um, on a whole, like you said, they don't appreciate art, and especially the ones that haven't quite got there yet but they do appreciate people like Rothko they appreciate people like Jean-Michel, uh, Warhol Keith Haring but that's only because they want then alright I sound a bit you know pessimistic whatever but that's only because they want that painting in their house they want to have yeah. a, a, a painting by Warhol or a print by Basquiat or a print by Haring or a print by 
now uh, Rothko, whatever it is. Well, you can't get Prince of Rothko really because it's only the original. But they want those things in their house, and they're sold in fancy galleries with champagne, and they want them in the house, and they go, oh, oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, that's oh, that's a herring. Oh, and how much did that cost you? And they talk about the money for an hour, and it's like, okay, but that's the only level that's really sort of consistently paid for and not really appreciated but wanted so but apart from that like you go to my level or a bit higher it's not massively appreciated by the masses it's only appreciated by a small community but the community that appreciates the work that goes for 50 grand in a big fancy gallery with security and champagne they don't really appreciate the work but they like it and they buy it because they can so there's a weird sort of gap and a grey area in the art market at the minute. Um, and to get from where I am to get to there is a massive, massive, massive leap. But yeah, there's no appreciation. Not really. Not like there should be or used to be. And you as a, I mean, you you are an artist and you have to focus on your work, but then you have also this side where you have to focus on the marketing or on the business side of the things. So do you find that difficult? Yeah. Or you have to uh, or are you a businessman? I mean, I've 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 been a bit of a businessman in in in, in a past life. I used to have a a window cleaning round. So that was my own with, you know. Um but when it comes to that side of things, it's kind of hard because yeah, I do promote myself or I do network or I do you know it, it's hard to market yourself as an artist and the only way to do it is by you can't really you can and you can't set up a business plan for your art what you have to do is you have to go to um you have to apply for exhibitions you have to give a lot of art away you have to message a lot of people and then when when it starts getting traction that's when you're like oh, okay I can now market my work and I can get a website and I can get a this and I can get a that and I can put it on TikTok and I can put it on Instagram and I can do I can do paid adverts um on on Instagram and Facebook. Really, that's the only real way, apart from being with a gallery, a big gallery, that's the only way you can market your work, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. But then when you go on Instagram, Facebook or TikTok, there's about a million other people doing the same thing. So yeah. it's like, it's you, you do have to look at the business side. You do have to read. I would recommend reading books on business. I'd recommend reading books on art. I'd recommend reading books on um, social dynamics um, to get like an overall picture of being an artist and what you need to do. So, yeah, it's I, I do it, but it's very hard to do. And it, it's sort of we want to just focus on our work and our art because, mm. oh, sorry, because you literally, um, you literally have not enough energy and sort of time to focus on the business side as well. You just want to be an artist, but in the real world, you have to promote yourself mm. and you have to try and be socially aware. And, and all that kind of stuff. So it's very hard to do, a very hard balance to strike. But if you strike it or or your work's really good and somebody takes you up, then great. But if it, if it don't, you have to go, right, how can I now promote my work um, and how can I get myself out there? Or alongside the 100,000 other people that are trying to do the same thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah, well, I hear this a lot from from artists, you know, saying the same thing. It's like if if they could just do what they love to do, you know, and just do their form of art, then. But it, the reality isn't like that. You know? No, no, mm -hmm. it's not. But I mean, we all we all want this fantasy where, as an artist, you're you're painting on on the. Um, you're 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 sat on a bench and you're drawing something, or you're in a gallery and you're you're drinking the free champagne because you're exhibiting. 
And then mm-hmm. some rich person comes along and goes, oh, this is amazing. Oh, yes, I'll, I'll buy this. And, and how many more do you have? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> And uh, how much? Oh, amazing! No, no, you you write the number. You decide how much. You know, and that's the that's the ideal. You know, it's like a movie. You're always expecting someone to go. Yes, I love your work. And and how much? Come in tomorrow, and we'll we'll sign a deal. And it's like <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You can be really good. You could. There's people out there that I know that paint better, mm. better than Michelangelo or better than Caravaggio. Their their work is incredible. Like the photorealism um, ability of some artists that I know is incredible. So it's like they're not getting snapped up. They're not going, oh, they can pay really well. I want them. No, they're not. They're getting put to the wayside because that's been done. So, yeah. It's it's we've all got this fantasy as an artist for some rich person to go. I want all your work and I'll pay you millions of pounds. It doesn't work. I mean, occasionally you get some person that's really lucky, and they're like, "Oh yeah, um, we'll pay a million pounds for that piece of work," and you think, "Oh, that can happen to me." So you hold out hope, hoping that that happens. But in the meantime, you've got to be like, "Well, hang on a minute." You still got to go to your job at Starbucks. You still got to go to your job at Tesco. You still got to wake up early and and clock in and and smile for the customer. You know, mm-hmm. so in between in between work and and bed, you have to figure out a way of building your brand and getting good at what you do. But even these days, being good at what you do isn't enough. There's people out there that are quite bad, but are very successful. So you've got to ask yourself why. And it's because they put themselves out there and they are really overly confident about things. Yeah, I I do agree with you there. That's that's sometimes you think, uh, sometimes you look at, uh, and, and, and you also find that in the ballet and, and music that you find, okay, what is this? really and people just rave about that so then you wonder about the uh you know why is that but now listen um what is what is the wish for you then so what are you you've said now that you wish all these things but but what is the dream and and what do you see for the future for your work oh god um so uh So the the thing is this, right? So I I've only started exhibiting like last December into this year. It, that this, this this is the first time in my in my journey as an artist, a career that I've exhibited. So I'm and I'm 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 playing catch up basically. So five five group shows in less than a year, um, in less than you know six seven months. So I'm 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 catching up with it. So I'm trying to like steam ahead to ideally would be a gallery deal so they pay they pay it's not about the money but you have to live and you have to live well i think so it's not about that but a gallery deal ideally a very comfortable um salary for my work and then you know if we're gonna go what's your sort of biggest fantasy then i'd say Building, building a life for my uh, for my son, where he has nothing to worry about, and having a nice big house in the country with a few cars, definitely an Aston Martin, and uh, <laughs> um, but having a life, having mm-hmm. having a family, and being able to provide for them and not worry, and you know, just be very comfortable with my work, with my salary, with my life you know, a wife and, and just say, look, have, have like this little sort of like empire where I can be like, this is yours. This is for you, you know, and, and just, yeah, just have a really, really good life with, uh, from making a living from my work, you know, a really good life. A good life. But That's amazing. I, I can see this little house in the countryside. 
with an oh, Aston no. Martin uh, parked in big, front of them. Yeah. Big house, big house, a long oh, driveway. Oh, big house, yeah, yeah. Okay. Long, long, long driveway, electric fence, a few dogs maybe. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the but that takes years of of patience and work, and I, I'm I'm getting there. I'm I'm trying to get there, you know. But it's um it takes time, it takes time. Mm. But it's about being. It's about being patient and consistent. That's what it's about. You've got to be patient. You've got to be patient, but work really hard and smart as well. Well, Martin, you'll have to let me know about uh, this house and the, the Aston Martin when it happens, because a lot of people who've <laughs> made wishes on my channel, their wishes came true. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So uh, just just please let me know when this happens. Yeah. I will definitely. Yeah, I'll be I'll be bragging quite a lot on that. Okay. <laughs> well, this is great talking to you. Thank you so much for sharing your story and and all this insight. This is uh, wonderful to know. It's uh, I haven't spoken to an artist, um, you know, a painter in in London yet. So it's great to know about what's going on there and the the art scene there. And um, all the best with your exhibition tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank for you. the future. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much for having me. It's been great. And please keep on um, um, painting these ballerinas, these ballet dancers. I love them. Thank you. I will. Yeah, I will. Okay. Well, definitely. I'll have, I have a I have a lovely afternoon. Yeah, you too. And whenever you come to Vienna, let me know and we'll grab a coffee. Definitely up for that. Definitely. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. <laughs> okay, Martin. Bye. Bye.